is Egypt. He was like, that's what the Seminole War was about, the Louisiana Purchase was about. And he was like, look up this map. It's called Tamari. Oh, and he said, y'all, it's Tamari Kings. So I went to look up at the map, right? And I was amazed he was right. He was like, that's y'all true nationality. And he was like, when the Seminole War broke out, that's when they won and they took over America and started calling them Americans and they spelt it different. And the Bible is based upon y'all. All pastors know this, Freemasonry know this, everybody know this. Pyramid on the loud and lot these Africa doesn't have stair steps going up it. It doesn't have temples on top of its summits. They could not go and break through the boat on the temples atop those great pyramids. There are none there. And that was the clue that Egypt was writing about the Americans. And the deeper I got into the records, the clearer it got. They started actually saying, and because I'm in love that land so much, he said it's his beloved land. And that word was Mary, the beloved, Mary, M-E-R-I, Mary. And the land, of course, as before, is Ta, the beloved land, Ta Mary. And they kept that name and just put the Ta on the end of it. So Ta Mary became a Mary Ta, we simply say, a Mary Ta. We kept the name that Egypt gave to the Americans. So that was the big mystery behind that $10 million map that Martin Waltzmuller made and then put the name America on it in 1507. And then those who knew and those who were trying to hide things said, wait a minute, you can't put that name on here. And the next time you reprinted that map, it was gone. Oh, it was gone. Oh, that's the name that Egypt has given the land. Now you know you're not. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. If you are on Gnostic TV and you are following the Esoteric Explorer series, then you are already familiar with my new friend, my new guest here, Derek. How are you doing today? I am great. Good to be here. I'm so excited to introduce you to my YouTube audience, you guys. And yep. if you're not on Gnostic TV, Derek is actually, just a little spoiler before we get into the topic at hand, Derek is actually a descendant of John Bell of the Bell Witch Hauntings, which I've covered on Gnostic TV. So another little spoiler, if you haven't seen that and you want to hear that story and Derek's story, you can follow the link down in the description box below because what a story that is. But today... When you contacted me, Derek, not only did you contact me about John Bell being your five times great grandfather, but you also mentioned something else to me that you had heard me say that you also had kind of played with. And what is that exactly? It is the idea or theory of ancient Egypt being here in the Americas, or at least some type of core. There's most definitely some type of correlation. You know, so the question is for me to what, it, like, is this actually ancient Egypt or is it just somehow paralleled, you know? That has been, I, I, I'll never forget when I first was hit with this idea that maybe I actually live in Egypt and you right. live in Egypt. Um, it was wild to me because I'm such a lover of history and geography that it never occurred to me mm -hmm. that they could have fooled us. Right. Where certain locations are. And I agree with you because there's three, I kind of have three theories in my head of what the truth could be. And I could be wrong with all of them, guys. I'm just, this is just how I'm trying to work it out in my head. And then we'll get into it. I either think, A, they totally lied to us. And they absolutely moved things from the southeastern part of the United States over to what we call Egypt today. Like totally lied. Things were hit, regardless, things were hidden. Yes. You know, yeah. Yes. I've also kind of thought, well, maybe for a long time I played with the idea that when the continent, when Earth was one continent before the what, Pangea, is that what it was called? One continent before it divided, that where the you know, South Eastern United States would have kind of been up there with. So maybe when it divided, it pulled it apart, which means that the divide would have had to happen faster and quicker than what we've been told. But then that theory got kind of blown out of the water for me when they started to discover roads uh, in the bottom of the pacific and the atlantic ocean mm -hmm. so that means there was a landmass there before and it didn't necessarily divide right 
Yeah. Another concept that I've been playing with is that we are living in, there's two different timelines happening. And we're seeing the evidence of both timelines. I kind of seen that a little too. And I'm going to go back to how this started, how it first came into my awareness. Okay. And so it started with a dream. I like in the dream, there's a lady and she was giving me information. And I remember, I remember being in the dream and I could see what she looked like. And she told me her name. Well, as soon as, soon as I woke up, I couldn't see her picture anymore and I couldn't re remember her name, but it kept going in my head. Um, the coastline of Montana, the coastline of Montana. So I'll wake up sometimes and I just have these like sentences like running through my mind. It's almost like I'm reading a book and I can usually remember like parts of it. Right. Um, so I wrote down, um, coastline of Montana, but then I go back to bed and I'm thinking there's not a coastline in Montana. I'm like, maybe she meant the coastline of Minnesota. I think is, I think it has like a coastline of the great lakes, but whatever. I was like, all right. Um, and so like within that, like next week I told, I was in the car with my parents and I told them about it. And then, and they were like, oh, they're like, we just saw something about the ancient coastline going through Montana. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> so after I, I did some research, and this is going back anywhere from like 20 to 100 million years ago. Um, and you can look up this information. You can just Google like 20 coast, the Gulf Coast 20 million years ago. Um, they also call it the Mississippi embayment, but essentially going through the United States from um, from Montana to the area where I live now, it was there was like a water passage going all the way through. So there literally was this ancient coastline in Montana, and I and the, I love when things happen like this because it I, not not that I can make sure not that everyone's going to believe me but in my own world it gives me 100 percent clarification when i have this random random dream some lady telling me some information and long and behold it's true you know yeah and i want to show our friends i think i know where you're going with this as well so like the the gulf coast here we have well that would make sense too because in montana today so look right here you uh, see guys right. like yep. montana today is landlocked and um what's interesting if we're look we're talking about egypt and america when we look at the mighty mississippi as it is today which would have been kind of that 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 waterway you're talking about would have whittled down to what we call the mississippi river that would have been the nile yeah and um and then i had another dream in, in the same bed it was like in the same exact spot i had another dream um of this lady tell and i i couldn't tell if it, if it was the same lady or not but it was like all it all came through the same and she was telling me about how there used to be pyramids all along the coast of like the tennessee river probably like the mississippi river but how there used to be legitimate pyramids all throughout north america so I am looking here. I'm seeing if they'll show a split screen. Absolutely. There are tons of pyramids. No, they're not. Of course, they're not going to show a, a split screen. There used to be a split screen you could look at and compare them to, but of course, they've taken that down. Um, there are pyramids all over, all over the United States, really, not just the Southeast. Like, there's some in the Grand Canyon. There's tons here um, in the Atlanta area that are hidden um, and... If we look at the Gulf, uh, the the Mississippi River, the mighty Mississippi, Mississippi River, the delta where it comes out into the Gulf is New Orleans. If we look at Egypt, where they call what they call the Nile, mm -hmm. the delta it comes out of is Alexandria. So Alexandria, for those I've covered Alexandria before, and I'll link that down in the description box, guys. But Alexandria, in in Egypt, that's where Cleopatra's body's missing. That's where the ancient library was that went missing. And so if by chance Alexandria is not Alexandria and New Orleans is Alexandria, that makes a lot of sense to me because New Orleans is magical and Alexandria was kind of magical, but that means Cleopatra's body. That means the library, all that stuff would be in the Gulf Coast. They're looking in the wrong, in the wrong ocean. What are yeah. your thoughts on that, Derek? Like I think, and so... I don't know because i i'm imagining okay 
like we know that they really have found um these tombs which i have been to in egypt like the king and the queen chamber you know like all of that like if if we're gonna say that egypt is here then we have to ask well then what is that over there right yeah um, so i think that maybe um like say going back to atlantis there could have been well, it seems like to me what would be here is more ancient than what they're finding in Egypt right now. So it would seem to me that potentially like maybe from Atlantis, there were different like people dispersed out to different locations or they came to the Americas first and then made their way to Egypt. But it does seem like to, it feels like to me that whatever is here in North America re that looks like Egypt and like parallels it. Um is even more ancient than what they're finding currently in Egypt. And even like a, a lot of the pyramids that were built here um, are constructed out of dirt. You know what I mean? So, and then over there they're using stone. So even with that, like as, as you start to make pyramids, the first thing you would use is probably dirt, you know, before you get in, into making them with stone. And I think too, like in Atlantis, I think the pyramid, like the technology of the pyramid, I see it going back to Atlantis. And then whatever happened with Atlantis, people dispersed through various parts of the world. So have you ever read the Emerald Tablets? I have a while back. I need to read he, them again. He ta thought talks about them, um, the pyramids and that they, you know, basically, you know, the pyramids, well, I think we kind of know this. They weren't burial. They weren't just burial places. They were used for spiritual purposes. They were used as like antennas. And he talks about some of his technology, some of his information being hidden under these pyramids. And I gather to believe that, that he means the United States. Yeah. not egypt as in where we think it is today and and i could see that that where we are in the southeast having um deeper roots than where and i think too it, derek you know being an american we're americans there has kind of been for the past maybe like 30 years this like propaganda this dumb american propaganda to like discredit americans to make us look dumb to make us feel like our country's not that great and part of me thinks that is because they're hiding something here and they don't want people to be interested in this land they don't want people to be here um i know for my my boyfriend is has gotten re um really into like you know growing up in the southeast we we it was very common as a child to find arrowheads in your backyard which were the 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 tops of the arrows that the Cherokee would use in, in battle and you would find them just like little rock arrowheads in your backyard and my boyfriend has been on a, miss a, mi a, miss a mission excuse me to find more artifacts and nowadays I don't know if you know this Derek when we were kids if you found an arrowhead you just pocket it and kept it nowadays if you find one and you don't turn it into the government you could be in federal prison and which is Scared. Why? Like, <laughs> what are you hiding? Because <laughs> we were kids, we found that shit all the time. Like, what are you? What are you hiding? And um, you know, there's there's so much. I know uh, you were talking about a map. I will say this now too, because when we this first happened, we kept it quiet because my boyfriend was trying to get it all. My boyfriend gained access to um, I won't say how, but he gained access to the archaeologist department at the University of Georgia to their archives. Typically, you have to pay money to get into the archives or be a student, but he got access to it because what he was doing, he loves to hike. So what he was doing was he was going to look at some old maps from like the 1800s to find logging roads because he felt like if he could find old logging roads, that would be a good hiking trail. He could also probably find some stuff, some cool stuff on it. And so he was sitting in the other room on his big computer, and I didn't know he was doing this. And all of a sudden, one day, I hear him scream bloody murder and told me to get in there. I thought I was in trouble. I thought I was a kid again, like in trouble. I see him sitting with his glasses on, like looking at this computer screen. He was like, look at this. This is a map. From, it was a map from the 1800s of Georgia. He was like, look at this. And I looked at it for a while. He goes, what do you see? Egypt. On a map from the 1800s. Or, like, it the said, word Egypt. Egypt. Uh, and my dad found on a, a topo map of this area, somewhere that says Egypt hollow. And, and this is like between 
here going to the south entrance of LBL, like right around the river here. Yeah. But there has to be, yeah, there's a reason that even if the reasoning wasn't that they thought it was Egypt, there's a re like, I feel like there's a, a spirit, like, I feel like there's no, nothing is a coincidence, right? So the fact that like, here we are talking about Egypt and we're finding the word Egypt on a map, it's I like- mean, 1800, yeah. Like, what did they know that they have not told us? Yeah. Now, this all also goes into the idea of, um, I'll have to be careful because I want to keep this on YouTube, but I have to be careful about how I say this, but the bank that's not a bank that collects our taxes every year, I'm not going to say it, um, they also control our education. In the early 19th, the 20th century, they took over and they created public schools in the United States, which I know for public in England, that means private and public schools here is government schools. So free school, most people go to them. But then they controlled our education, so they got to change the education, right? So what did the people in the 1800s know that we don't know today? Now, um, Derek, have you heard of the Norris Dam in Tennessee? I just heard of it two days ago. <laughs> What's I had heard, Yeah, I had not heard about it until then, but I definitely have some thoughts on it. So the Norris Dam, you guys, I've talked about this before, but this is a dam in um, Tennessee, it's close. Is it close? It's near Knoxville. It's east, yeah, it's eastern Tennessee. Yeah, it's very near Knoxville, which is where the University of Tennessee is located. It's a state park. I've been there. Um, now, they went in the, in the 20th, so 1933, right here, early, mid 20th century, they started this whole campaign in the United States where they were building all these dams to create more water generation for the people. Well, and for power, they tell us for power. Yeah. Which they did give us power, but I, I've read like the original documents of starting when they incorporated the Tennessee Valley Authority. Mm -hmm. It and the power set like that was like a little um just like a kind of thrown in there. Oh, and it's also gonna give the people power, but there were like all types of um like not great ideas that they had when they were starting the Tennessee Valley Authority, which well, is they drowned. They what they did too is they they drowned out. They covered things, so yeah. by creating the dam, they literally drowned out a whole village. I want to say, but the one in Norris Dam, um, which I just I got the information through YouTube, so I don't know if it's all accurate. But they were saying that they thought that it was an Egyptian temple. Yeah, and temple to uh, to ISIS yeah yeah and tennessee so tennessee actually means the country of isis a c is isis that's how they spelled isis for a very long time which the essenes which was jesus's group they were the essenes they were the the priests and priests of isis Essene, tennessee the country of isis we also know in the grand canyon they found isis temples too correct yeah they, I think they found some Buddha, like mm -hmm. stuff from like Buddha statues and Egyptian stuff, which where is why is this, that's on the complete other side of the country. Right, like where is this coming from? And something else. So Cleopatra, who was the last Ptolemy ruler of Egypt before it fell to the Romans, she um, had ch some children. One of her sons, I think it was Alexander. He's disappeared from all of our records. We Nobody knows what happened to this son. Many people assumed he was probably killed by the Romans. But I don't know if you're aware of this, Derek. A few years back, maybe like a decade or two ago, people in like Ohio started to um, find Egyptian money in their backyards with his name on it. Um meaning that he ruled at some point. And so people started to speculate back then that maybe what happened was he ran from um, the Romans, got a boat, got some people, and took a boat all the way over to the Americas and ruled in the Americas. Well, if that's the case, why is it not in our history books? That's a pretty big deal. Yeah. If he brought a whole bunch of Egyptians over to America, well, first of all, wasn't that long ago, okay? So, like, Cleopatra died, like, right before the, from what, what we are timeline from B.C. to A.D., 
she was like right before, right before Jesus was born, which whatever, you know, so that was only like 2000 years ago. So we know that the Vikings came first to the, the, the Americas in like a thousand AD. So only a thousand years later, the Vikings were coming here. We also know before that, before the Vikings got here, there was what a Welsh priest who came here. Like, there's so shit's not adding up. Basically it's not adding up. And how could one boy with a boat, just one boat, bring in a whole civilization in that short amount of time where they're building temples. What are your thoughts on that, Derek? I mean, going back to, I still, I think that it, like, I think probably that temple would predate yep. what is going, what, what they're currently finding in Egypt. And that's why it, it makes sense. To, I mean, it could be that here was like the original settlement of like the Egyptian culture. And then it like from this area of the world, it spread out say to the grand Canyon, other way over to Egypt, probably other parts of the world, but it, and just like intuitively sensing into it, it, it feels like to me, like the, like the center point is like all coming into the deep South per se. I, that's just like how it intuitively feels to me. Um, okay. Yeah. And, and whenever I first started, um, I was reading, it's called some, um, dreams of ISIS. I don't know, it's some book about ISIS and like Egyptian culture and stuff. And they were talking about, um, when they damned, they also damned the Nile. Like mm -hmm. there's two parts of the Nile that goes into one. They damned that up and how they just completely messed up the entire ecosystem there. And I was like, Oh, that's exactly what's happening here. Um, and then also like with the Tigris and Euphrates, that parallels the Tennessee River and the Cumberland River, which is now Kentucky Lake and Lake Barkley. And going back to the times of the Cherokee and Chickasaw being here, they referred to what's now land between the lakes, LBL. They called it the land between the rivers. And that's also what they call in between the Tigris and Euphrates. <laughs> I've literally got goosebumps. I actually was going to ask you, and I were filming right now, I was going to ask if you wanted to come back and do a show on the land between the lakes with Jessica, with the remote viewer, because yeah. that's a fascinating area that I don't think a lot of our viewers really know much about, especially my viewers. I have a lot of viewers from other countries, which I love. I yeah. love that we have such a um, global community of people here because it's so cool to see other people's perspectives from where they're from. And I actually know, you know, funny thing, Derek, is a lot of my viewers, a lot of our friends watching right now are Europeans. Okay. Who believe Egypt is in America? Uh, interesting. I would like so, it would be interesting to hear, um, because as I as I said originally, like all this natural just came in through dreams, through just like feelings. I had literally never heard the concept that Egypt might be here. It just kind of all came in. I was like, whoa. And then you, I heard it from you, and then I I started doing some of my own research and realized that it's actually a theory that people it's talk a thing about. yeah it's and it's something it's one of those things the first time i ever brought it up on my show i was kind of nervous to bring it up because you're like people are gonna think i'm wackadoo people yeah. are gonna think this is the craziest shit ever but then you're like but no there's actual evidence this isn't just some some like theory off the wall theory we have these these strange things we have these dams here i mean lake lanier is uh, people keep asking me to cover lake lanier and I'll, I'll i'll will eventually get to it which is a lake just outside of atlanta that was drowned a city out and now it's super haunted and super cursed people die in it all the time and then uh the norris dam that's they were like they literally picked places where a civilization existed and they yeah. dropped it out and my yeah. right why they're definitely and whether they were doing it on purpose or not, they definitely covered stuff up. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think that I think that they conveniently like, I mean, oh, there's an Egyptian temple. We're building a dam. They could have done it somewhere else, probably yeah. al along that pathway of, of the river. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I definitely think that I think that they were already planning on damming stuff. And then they it was almost like for, for the evil team, it was like a beautiful, perfect scenario. Cause so they're like, convenient. So right, we're, convenient. we're already going to damn anyway. Oh my God. Let's damn the right here. I don't need to know the, this. Like, hide that Egyptian temple there. You know what I mean? So yeah, I definitely think that it probably came into their awareness. Um, I don't think, it, I don't think that that was, I honestly don't think that that was their first reasoning for doing the dams, but I think it just conveniently fell into play for them. They can uh, hide it. Yeah. 
Because we know yeah. nowadays, like I've said, you know, now they won't even let you carry any Cherokee artifacts you find in your own backyard home or you could go to federal prison. Why? Why yeah. all of a sudden is there a need? Is it because when we were kids, no one was really tossing this theory around and now we have YouTube and everyone's talking about it and people are starting to get, get a hold of maps that have interesting information and people are going, why? Why does this map from the 1800s say this? Why is this? Is somebody's got some explaining to do here like this is this isn't making this isn't adding up with what we've been taught and you know especially i know i covered the moon eye people on um on gnostic that the cherokees which were big that was the big tribe where, where i live um were very clear that they were not the first inhabitants of this land that there was this other group and you guys it's on gnostic if you want to watch more about the moon eyed people that's on gnostic tv as well but but they kept saying I, I felt bad. I mean, I feel bad for the Cherokee for a lot of reasons. But they kept telling the settlers that they pushed people out too. That and, they pushed people out. Yeah. Yeah. So I noticed on the Cherokee website, the Cherokee Nation, that they um. So whenever they uh, when the government first made them like go out to Oklahoma and they had to form their own. I guess it's like a almost a corporation. It's they had to have their own seal for like for government paperwork. You know, you, they stamped their the Cherokee seal, and they the Cherokee chose um, a seven pointed star. So when you have when you have seven points on a star, it's either going to be a point facing to the top or the bottom. Well, on the original seal, they had the point to the top. Well, I noticed that on their website it had been inverted, and so I'm like. I'm like, mm, I know about inverting the the yep. pentagram, you know. So I was like, are they trying to is the government trying to further like push the spirit of the Cherokee into the ground, you know? Um right. so I, I just pulled it up for you guys to see and that the yeah, they they totally, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So here's one and then yeah, there's inversions going on for sure. That's like the pentagram. Everybody thinks the pentagram is bad. But the pentagram, when it's on its right side up, is just the elements of nature. What they've done is they've flipped it upside down, and that's what creates yeah. the, the goat's head. Um, so, yeah. And so on that, so I, so I called them. I, I called the Cherokee Nation. I'm like, hey, I'm just like I'm I'm a guy that lives here in in Tennessee and Kentucky, and I noticed this on y'all's website. I just wanted to know, are y'all aware of this? So the first people that I'm talking to, they're like, what are you talking about? Um, I'm like, under <laughs> side, you why, boy. Still, I'm, I'm like, yeah, originally it was pointed up. Now it's inverted. I'm like, I want to make sure that the government didn't do this to y'all being all tricky. I'm like, or did y'all as a Cherokee nation decide y'all want to invert it? And if so, if y'all can fill me in, I understand if it's like private information within y'all's culture, but if not, I would love, I'm just curious, why is y'all's star now inverted when originally it wasn't? So eventually I got to a guy and... I could tell that they didn't really know. And he was like, are you a reporter? I'm like, no, I'm just like curious dude here in Kentucky. I'm, and I'm John, I'm John Bell's great, 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 great. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I, then I, I did ask him, um, what was their like, like origin story? Like, like in y'all's, like I've, I've heard from, from books and here and there, but I've never actually talked to, to straight to a Cherokee. And I'm just curious, what is y'all's origin story? Because I was also at this time interested in Dunbar cave where they had found the, like a 10,000 year old symbol. Right. So I'm thinking, all right, did the Cherokee originate here? Is that their story? Well, he told me that their insight story is that they came up from the Caribbean because yeah. you hear a lot that they came down from yeah. the North, yes. but he, that he told They're me. Great. Yeah. He told me that they came up from the Caribbean and I've always, I, I've lived, the only other places I've lived besides Kentucky and Tennessee, I've lived in, in West Palm Beach, Florida, um, Miami, Florida, Puerto Rico, and, um, and I traveled to Cuba a lot and my husband is from Havana. And so as soon as he told me that, I was like, boom, I'm like there, I was like, that's why I've always been gravitated from the Caribbean and up to here. You know, because I also have the connection to the Cherokee. So, do you know? As you're saying that to him, I'll, I'm also thinking about um, Marco Polo and not Marco Polo. Excuse me, um, the, um, Ponce de Leon. Ponce oh. de Leon 
and Christopher Columbus and these um, Spanish, DeSoto. DeSoto, that's it, DeSoto, they came up, of course, because the story, as they tell us, I heard somebody say once to me, Derek, all of us that keep researching, we're like, the more I learn, the less I know. I had had someone say, to uh, an English person said to me, you know, I'll be damned if they tell us actually Christopher Columbus discovered Europe, not America. <laughs> like at this point, I would not be surprised. That it was just a typo, whoops. Yeah, yeah, actually the other way, I'd be, I, I, nothing would shock me anymore. Nothing would shock me anymore at this point. But if we're looking at the narrative they give us in school, when they came up at first, Columbus and his group, his posse, found the islands, the Caribbean islands, before they found the, the mother load of the American continent. And, and again, Christopher Columbus, as they tell us, never believed he had found a a new a new continent he it was obvious it wasn't new there's was people there with beautiful temples and stuff exactly well he thought he had found india because that was his whole right. thing was he's going to get that's why we called it that's why we ended up calling the native americans indians because he literally believed he was a stubborn man he was an alcoholic not a very pleasant person if you read his journals i've had to read his journal not a pleasant person at all I think he's probably a narcissist, but you know, <laughs> um, very, very mean man. But his group of explorers, they kind of island hopped until they eventually got to Florida. And Florida, for those who don't know, was owned by the Spanish for a very long time. Doesn't Florida mean flower or something? Um, it's a Spanish word. Well, there in Florida, there's a lot of mystical um, watering holes. I don't know what to call the springs. In North Florida, have you been to these? Oh, I've been to a few of them. I have. N I'm surprised that I haven't, but I have not. But I've seen pictures, and I'm like, why did I not go there when I lived in Florida for so long? Because they're beautiful. They're beautiful. It's yeah. um, it's. Hold on, sorry. Um, it's sorry, guys. As I told Derek, I've got a delivery coming at the same time. This is this freaking AT and T shutdown yesterday really screwed everything up. So if you see, look, <laughs> that's why. But okay, so I've been when I was a kid, I grew up going to Wakala Springs a lot because my grand, my great grandfather had a house in the Gulf called the Cow Palace because he was a dairy farmer, um, and we would stop by Wakala Springs. And then just recently, I started go going to Itchnatuckney, which is near Lake City, Florida. And I'm just gonna pull up, you guys. It is the wildest. Um, some of these pictures, Florida Springs. It is the beauty of some of these springs. The color that comes from these springs is unbelievable. Yeah, it just looks magical. <laughs> it's cold as hell. Like, it's so freaking cold. But we know... Like there's the devil's, I think that's the devil's den or something. It's underground. You have to, you, you can actually get a scuba diving. Like here's some scuba divers. You can actually scuba dive. This is near Orlando, I believe. Um, I mean, look at this. This is, and they're all free. It's free entrance. You just go in. Um, you can rent like paddle boards and stuff. You see clear to the bottom. And there's all these folklore around healing. These springs, I, I can see it looks healing to me, just like the energy of looking at the pictures, you know. There's and I, I, I we just I recently went to the Itchnatuckney and and uh, we did a hike, we hiked, they have hiking trails too, and they didn't, they don't let your animals, so on, uh, which I think is bullshit. Um, so I couldn't bring my dog, but I ran and I was like, I'm just gonna jump in. They're so cold, which I think there's a lot of healing in cold water anyway. So I plunged in, came out, and North Florida, especially in the summertime, guys, it's hot, like it is so freaking all of Florida, it's hot. So the fact that these this water has stayed very very cold, um, even when it's really hot outside, and it's just I never thought about it as a child, but re-exploring this idea that this is Egypt and there's something magical here brought me back to these natural springs. So I and you know we we hear about. Um, the Fountain of Youth. Yeah. You no, know, um, there's big, I think it was DeSoto who was looking for the Fountain of Youth or Ponce de Leon, one of the two. And uh, there is a rumor that the Fountain of Youth is actually under uh, Ponce City Market here in Atlanta. That is a, a rumor, but they were looking, they were looking for, they came up through Florida and they heard all these rumors from the, from the natives that there were healing waters in, in the area that brought you youth now i don't know if they meant literal you're never going to die or if they meant that they were healing they gave you a sense of your youth back 
what are your thoughts on that, Derek? Well, here, I don't know about, there, I mean, looking at those pictures, I mean, I can tell there's healing energy in those locations. Um, and, but in this area, <clears throat> there is what sulfur wells is what it's called and so and sulfur springs so there used to be like these freshwater springs of like sulfur water that's like shooting out of the ground and people would go there back in the day to heal and they also had these around dunbar cave around adams and clarksville it's dunbar cave is actually in the state park in clarksville tennessee right beside adams and um Whenever they they dam, whenever they dam the Tennessee River with the Kentucky Dam, they just covered it all up. So there's like this area where people used to come and heal in the healing waters, and they're like, "No, can't can't be doing that." <laughs> you can't be doing. Well, it's it, you just said Dunbar Cave. Let me pull it up for you guys. So people can see. Um, hopefully, this is the correct. Play. Whoops. Let me do the share screen here. Um. Oh yeah, well we know to look. Yeah, that's the 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 oldest art you're you're talking about, right? In the Dunbar Cave. Yeah, they they carbon dated it back to like ten thousand years ago. Um, I, I'm not sure if they found other stuff or not, but that shows that we know for sure that at least ten thousand years ago there were people living in the uh, the sun there. That's the one right there. This one right here. Um. Yes, that one. This is the one I know that they dated. This is wild. And then not far from there, pull up a map of um what is the, the military base around here? Fort Campbell. All right. Let me pull this Fort Campbell. Yeah. So my mom reminded me of this. She said that she couldn't remember where she got the information, but she remembered reading or seeing somewhere that whenever they were pushing the natives out and before America was even um, America, the, the United States government had already, they had zoned in on this location where that's now Fort Campbell. And we're like, all right, that's like the number one spot that we need to make sure we keep in our control, which it's right by LBL. And we're all yeah, I was about to say, I was looking at, it's a, kind of on the border of um, Tennessee as well. Right. Yeah, it's right over by like Adams too. Where where John Bell were the so here's you guys, here's a map. You guys can see that that red dot. So I'm down here in Atlanta. You're in Kentucky. This is this long log looking state is Tennessee, the country yeah. of ISIS, as that as that means. This is New Orleans, the Gulf of Mexico. So the mighty Mississippi would come up through this way. Um now Memphis, Tennessee. Have you heard about everything that was found in Memphis, Tennessee? I, I don't know what was found there, no. So in the early, and I, I know the pictures are not going to, I'll see if I still have the picture saved on my phone. I sent them to my friend Jessica, the remote viewer, just recently. There, um, so I know they've taken the pictures down now. In the early 20th century, there was all when there were all these pictures of these big sphinx in Memphis. Like actual sphinx. Like actual, found. yeah. They had like white people sitting on them, taking pictures with them, like, and then they got rid of them. Why? Like, yeah. why? Why did you guys get rid of them? What What do you not want us to know? What do you not want us to know? And um, I don't know if you've seen the Tartarian stuff, um, Derek, but there's this great seven hour documentary um, that about that goes through Tartaria. And he poses a really interesting, this is what got me like, this is what really got me. Have you ever been to Washington, DC, Derek? Yes. Those buildings are gorgeous. DC is so mapped out and it, they're so old, these buildings. How is it that a well, bunch of white men in stockings without any electric tools built these buildings? Same with like all the European old buildings. Like you look at the Champs Elysees in Paris and it's like you see pictures of people like in mud because there's mud, mud, not no paved roads, but they built this arc. With no, we can't even replicate the stuff nowadays. Yeah. So his his proposal was these buildings were already here, and we know in Capitol Hill. So if we're looking at Egypt being here in the United States, and that would beg the question: Is the real Israel here? Is the real 
Mesopotamia here. And in the capital, in Capitol Hill, in the atrium, there is a sculpture in the ceiling of Magdalene. Why? Why Magdalene? Yeah. And if our forefathers who built Washington, D.C. didn't even have electrical tools, how'd they do that? But yeah, they weren't paving roads. Mm -hmm. Like all of a sudden you sit back and you go, how the hell? So what are your thoughts on that? Have you heard that before, Derek? I, no, I've never thought about that. Um, or heard that. I mean, do we know when the buildings were built? Do we know that they, like, do they tell us a time they frame? They say when they moved, um, when they, whenever they moved to the Capitol down to Washington, D.C., because the whole story is, is it, was up, it was up north, and the Southerners got pissed because they wanted easy access to the Capitol, so they moved it to Washington, D.C., and they built the Capitol then, so it would have been a post-American Revolution. So it would have been probably what? Well, let me look that up. When, when did D.C.? Let's see here quickly. When was the U.S. Capitol? Here we go. Capitol moved to D.C. Oh, let's see here. May 15th, 1800. I mean, I don't know. What type of buildings were they building over in Europe at that time? Well, Europe. So a lot of the older buildings in Europe is the same thing. Yeah. Same thing in Europe, like, okay, so you have the Champs Elysees. You, if you do the oversight of Paris, you see how they, this guy, his his theory is that all these arcs are actually magnets. Okay. And it was to help give free energy. And that's why um, I have to sign out to be able to pull the new, new screen back up. But I'll show you guys the overview of, um, let's see, Champs Elysees. I'll say, I do think that going back, I don't know how far in time it would be, but I do like, the concept of the fall of Atlantis, I believe, correlates with, like, we had a fall in human consciousness. Yep. Um, I can agree and, with that for sure. You know, so definitely, like, I do think that there would be architecture left over from before the fall, which is kind of, in my world, I kind of see Atlantis, the time of Atlantis as, like, pre the fall. Like, when I, when I hear the fall of Atlantis, it's not so much meaning that an island sank, which of yeah. maybe maybe it did maybe it didn't but to me it's more like um the island of human consciousness sank and we just kind of went into like forget zone well and i don't even think atlantis yeah, was was an island i think it was the whole globe see you see how the the champs Elysees. see how it, it ricochets out in these perfect geometrical shapes yeah like this guy who did this documentary was like how is that even possible for our ancestors to have built this in in the time period they claim we we built this in and i agree with you i and i and i wonder where the crossover is with the theory of egypt being in in the united states is that more of a leftover from the atlantean experience is that more you know and what's interesting to me about egypt and and um thoth talks about this in the emerald tablets and I think I told you, Derek, I have this history book here from the early 1800s. It's a little kid's yeah. history book. And it talks about how the Native Americans were all racist. White people, black people, that they, the people that were already inhabiting this land were all racist. Well, if we look at the uh, Thoth's account of the land of Kim, which is Egypt, and the fall of Atlantis, Atlantis was all racist. Because the theory is, is that all races like we don't you know they, they want us to believe that derek and i are white because our ancestors migrated to northern europe well a lot of people are saying well no it's because of the the 12 tribes of israel would be the 12 galactic forces that's that created humanoids on this planet so if you are a white person you probably have palladian lyran in you maybe some octurian um, if you are black, you have a lot of Syrian, which Syrian was a big, powerful star system. It still is. The Dogon people still to this day in Africa talk a lot. You know, they have communication with, with the, the, the Cirrus uh, star, not the radio, but the star. Um, so that means that the land of Kim or Egypt, and we still see that in Egypt. Like, according to 23 and me, I have, I have Coptic Egyptian in me. You know, it's like 
we still see this hodgepodge of um, different races living under one as one. And we look at the um, hieroglyphics, we see all sorts of races. And we've talked about this on my channel before, the blue people. There were blue people too. And my, I posed a, quest, a question, where did the blue people go? And my friend Angie found them in Kentucky. There are blue people in Kentucky. Everything's in Kentucky. <laughs> Everything's in Kentucky. So then that goes back to Appalachia, right? We talked about Appalachia with, how do, how do you think Appalachia plays into all this? Because Appalachia is wild, you guys. Like, it's wild. I mean, it feels that, like, Appalachian, um, the Blue Ridge Mountains, just all of that going in, like, where I am right here, it's not super mountainy. It's kind of getting into, like, the hills. And it just, it feels very ancient to me. So, like, for some reason, I just, like, they they say that everyone moved into this area from somewhere, even, like, the natives. But I, just, I have, like, this something telling me that there were, like, right here in this area was, like, it was, like, an origination point. However humans came about, right? We still don't know that. Or do we just, like, pop in one day, like, <laughs> hey, you know what I mean? Jazz hands. Jazz hands, <laughs> right. we're here. We're here. <laughs> we're here. You know, or did... <laughs> Someone bring a big egg and it cracked and Ooh. I mean, who, you know, like, who knows, right? We don't know how like that first, how we first came into like the material world. I think we were more like came in from the spirit and, yeah. and, and did kind of just evolve to being here. But I think that there was like, we have these portals within the earth, right? And I think that there's a main portal connected with like the Appalachian mountains and all of that. That was like a, a literal origination point of boom, here's a human. However that happened, it had to happen somewhere. Right. Yeah. I, and that, that, that's kind of been my thought too, because we hear like life started in Africa. Then we hear the, um, the fertile crescent could have been in place, but what if all of that actually was here in, in yeah. the United States? And it's amazing to me, um, Derek, how brainwashed brain mind control people get. Cause they get so triggered when you say that I'm like, in my in my opinion as bryce as a person off of youtube just as myself it doesn't ma really matter to me where we originated we we originated somewhere i just yep. want to know where well i think that different races popped in probably at the places? same time in different places yeah like it probably. doesn't make sense like they say oh people have black skin because they they were lived where it's super sunny and like i don't know it just doesn't feel it right doesn't, no. You know what I mean? I mean we, like, we're from the South, Derek. You know, like, it's hot as hell down here. And, and you're right there saying, this has taken over millions and millions of years. But I haven't noticed in the however many years they say my ancestors have been here, I haven't noticed huge changes. And I haven't, yeah. if anything, our hair's gotten even blonder being in, in the heat, you know, because yeah. if you're lucky enough to grow up swimming in chlorine pools, your hair turns green in the summertime when you're blonde. Yeah. So, um, and, like, whenever I imagine, like, the like mother earth, like in a human form for I, some reason I do see it as a black woman, like a black female, like queen bee mother. Right. I see it as a black African lady and <clears throat> I do. And I, I could see there be, there's gotta be like a birth portal in Africa too, I think. So mm -hmm. I, I literally think that there, however it happened, all the, why there are so many different races is because we all like have our own little like origination point somewhere on earth. Well, you know, it's interesting um, because like I said, the uh, Cirrus, the star Cirrus was such a powerful influence mm -hmm. in the creation story of this planet and our cultures in this planet. And that is predominantly where a lot of uh, black people originate from. So that could make sense why you see the image of a black woman because that is one of the main, um, the main dominant, and this is all theory guys. Like don't well, they say that Sirius is the like mother star to mm -hmm. our sun. Yep. You know, so without Sirius, our sun would never be here and therefore we would never be here, you know? So right. it's like, a absolutely theory. on the Joe gone people. I mean, I'll, I'll link those videos down in the description box, but two guys, two guys, cause I've, I've spoken about the Joe gone people with Hillis, my, my friend Hillis, they still, they still are in communication with with humanoid beings from from Sirius and um yeah and I just want to make this very clear guys this is all theory that we're speculating right now so don't you know for the academics watching I'm an academic too you guys I'm a researcher I'm but it's it you know as as Aristotle said is it, it is a sign of an intelligent mind when you can entertain an idea without accepting it and that's something I would ask people like entertain these ideas like what if 
what they've told us in our history isn't true. Like, right. what if there's more to the American continent than they've led us to believe? What and if? Yeah. That's what, that's what we're asking. What if and why? Why on earth? Now, I can, I have a hard time controlling my dog on a leash. If I can't even control my dog on a leash. I'm not. I have no interest in trying to control another human being. To me, that stresses me out. Like, to, if I had to, if somebody came today and said, "Bryce, I'm going to make you a head of the new world, new world order," I'd be like, "No, no, 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 no." Like, I can't. That's too. That's too overwhelming for me. So I don't understand that mind. That mind. That that mind uh, wanting to control everything. So my question is, why do you guys want to hide this from us? Why, if, if you don't want us to think that there's any type of conspiracy going on, then tell us the truth. And maybe they, like one reason, like a logical reason could be that <clears throat> whenever they formed America, they're coming over, they like, they're bringing their culture with them and they already have, they already have their history books and their story and so as soon as they came over here they were putting the native they were putting natives in um european school right like so that they were already trying to brainwash people so they probably got over here and they started seeing all this stuff that literally blew their their history out of the water so they're like get rid of everything because what are we gonna we, we're gonna have to rewrite our history books real quick <laughs> do, you, yeah. do you remember that movie notting hill which yes. is that. Do you remember when he falls down? He goes, whoops a daisy. That's what my favorite. I always think about. And that's why I see like the people going, whoops a daisy. Right. <laughs> whoops a daisy. <laughs> whoops a daisy. Um, so yeah, I, I think too that there is some sort of of you know, when you look at the law of one, the dark side, the dark polarity, they hide their knowledge. They make it so you have to earn it in secrecy, but the, the positive polarity shares their knowledge, right? So if I discover something interesting, I'm going to want to share it. That's my natural inclination is to get on YouTube, be like, oh my God, guys, look what I found. It's like, I want to hear what other people have to say. I don't want to hide anything. So I'm wondering too, if that there isn't some sort of technology, if there isn't some sort of elixir that you know, we talk about these springs. I mean, the springs in Florida are available to the public, but if they're available to the public, and I think they can heal what isn't available to the public, what's being hidden. And that's and that's what I, I kind of want to like shake the powers that be. Like, if you don't want people to think there's cons a conspiracy, then be honest with us. Yeah. If you accidentally flooded... Don't shadow ban my account whenever I question you. <laughs> exactly. No. Ex looking at you, church. Um, <laughs> if you're, if you believe so strongly in your Freemason Bible, then you wouldn't have to shadow ban me. Right. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, I, I just, we already know, I mean, you, you, what, what you're saying, like, you know, we look at, like, we talk about the whitewashing of things. Like we look at, um, and don't get me wrong, guys, European culture is a beautiful culture. I mean, both Derek and I are white people. I'm just saying like, when we try to dominate, um, certain theories or certain uh, chains of belief onto other people, it messes it up for everyone, including the ones trying to dominate. You know, we all lose. We all lose when we can't recognize the truth. You know, even look at like the Jesus character, Yeshua. The painting of Jesus that everyone has in their house is actually of Cesare Borgia. That's Cesare Borgia, who was the Pope at the time's son, who was horrifically abusive to people. So, and then, but then when you tell people that and they get so triggered, they get so triggered. It's like, you really think that this Jesus guy had white, was white skinned, blue eyed and had Pantene Pro V hair <laughs> in the desert. Yeah. Herbal essence commercial. Herbal essence, you know, like, <laughs> no, <laughs> like, he was probably, your, he was probably a little dirty. Uh, they probably all were. Have you walked through the desert in flip flops? <laughs> it's not clean. <laughs> um, you know, obviously he at least had a suntan, at least give him that. He had a suntan, you know, um, probably did not have blue eyes. We know Magdalene did, but she's connected through the Druid line, which is the Celtic line, which comes from the Kentuckian, which is another planet system that, you know, the Cassiopeians have talked about this. So we know that Magdalene did have that Druid descent within her, that she did, that is absolutely spoken about, that she was connected to Druid. So that would lead us to believe that she probably looked more like Derek and me, but her husband was black and how is it then if we look at that reality of this forgotten time 
that the real Magdalene and the real Yahshua were an interracial couple. And that wasn't any big deal. Maybe in America. <laughs> and be in America. And that wasn't a big deal back then. Yep. They didn't care. Did they know something? Did those people know something about our origin that we don't know? That that they accepted they all all the different colors of the planet came from different planetary systems and we but we were all we were all but but be by 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 the privilege of being born on this rock that makes us all earthlings so did they not even give a shit about you know it's like it just it, it opens up it's like that whole the more you learn the less you know right like it opens up even more questions yeah and i think a big part too is that the government for whatever reason they do want us to be relied rely they want us to rely upon the government you know, they don't want us to be completely independent and not need them to question. And that's just all free thinking is guys. It's all questioning. Like I said, if you, if someone comes up and says, no, this is the truth. They got on a boat. They brought the culture here from blah, blah, blah. And you had the evidence to back it. I'd be cool, cool with that. I just want to know why it's being hidden and and why, why are all there? Why are all these, diff these weird things about, like you said, the, to, to the land between the rivers, the two, the two, like that gave me chill bumps. Like that made me like almost crap my pants. I was like, okay, even more evidence that there's something, something stinks in Denmark. Something stinks in the United States. <laughs> like, what are you not telling us? Yeah. You know, the whole Salem witch trials, there's a whole theory that the people who were killed out in these witch trials, not just here in America, they were also happening in Europe, were the, the old priest and priestesses of Tartaria. And they were using, I mean, let's be honest, Eric, if they had witch trials today, you and I both would probably be. I'd be done for. Me too. Unless I, I could get my witch powers going real good. I know. Grass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the uh, other? A muck, a muck, a muck, a muck. A muck like just, <laughs> as long as I have an outfit like Sarah Jessica Parker's and Hocus Pocus, I'll be fine. <laughs> no, you know, I, I just, um, and there's this whole book here. I've where do I still have and it? and like with the witch thing too why did they portray the witch as being so evil yeah like all, why, why are they so against people doing white magic all you which know? means is white as wise woman that's all it means so there's this book uh uh catastrophobia catastrophobia and it talks about how we start to over time get ingrained with irrational fears because of past catastrophes like so many people are afraid of water because of all of the um flooding stories which i think go back to atlantis to yeah. be honest with you. so a lot of people have these fear of water and it goes back to this massive catastrophe that happened well another catastrophe that happened was the witch trials and we know that these for the majority that their people were using natural medicines were using herbs homeopathic midwifery like they were they were the healers but they all were massively exterminated and so yeah. there was a catastrophobia fear that all of a sudden people started to reject homeopathic healing because it's because it subconsciously it brought them back to the genetic memory of from yeah. practicing that and i think even when some like call it like a natural witch, like people who have natural healing abilities, say they start to accidentally discover those things. Also, like what with with what you're saying, I think a lot of people get scared of, oh, I, am I evil? Am I doing yeah. something wrong? Yeah. They're scared to even tap into that part of themselves, which I see as a natural, like the fact that we can heal naturally with energy, we can use our minds to heal. I think that like, say if, I've imagined if, if an asteroid's coming at the earth, right? And we're like, oh, it's doomsday. Well, if everyone's in fear on the planet, it's probably going to be doomsday. Yeah. But if, if all the planet came together, I, I literally think that we have it within our soul and our being and our makeup. If we all just use our mind, which this would be witchcraft, but using it like I would call this white magic. If we just all concentrated at the same time of this asteroid not hitting earth, it, it would literally would. go boom. Because we, we create matter. And that's the thing people forget yeah. is that what came first, the chicken or the egg? Well, and in spiritual worlds, we, spirit came first. Consciousness created matter. So if consciousness created matter, then we have matter under our control. 
And I've done some shows with Sean Stone before. Do you know who Sean Stone is? Um, Oliver Stone's son, the director Oliver Stone. Um, Oliver Stone, of course, has done some. He's an Academy Award winner, done some big, um, big whistleblower type movies. But he brought up a good point. He talked about like in Hollywood, the director kind of controls the shot, controls like the angle in which the camera is facing, the music, the uh, how close the camera gets to the person's face. So therefore, therefore, the director is controlling your reaction. That's the storytelling aspect, right? If you hang the camera from another direction and play different music, it might have a different emotional response than vice versa. So if we think about that from a collective consciousness perspective, if we're all under mass hypnosis, the powers that be know this, so they control this narrative to put us under mass hypnosis so that we inadvertently use our magic that we all have within ourselves to fulfill their desires. They know that. So it's kind of like what you're saying, they get us to focus on one thing. And then it blows up and gets out of proportion because we're all focusing our attention on that one thing. But if we took that power back and realized that it's our magic they're using, they're not using their magic, they're using our magic. They're manipulating our magic. And that's kind of... All, like I see like them, they're, they're kind of all out of magic. Like yeah. As you said, the dark they can't create. It's like not that they don't have that <clears throat> innate ability within them, but they, like if you... The darker you get, the like you're you're cut off from spirit. All of your yeah. creative forces are just gone. They're gone. So they, they have to use us. Yeah. So that's why that's why when you understand that, that's why you understand why they do these the rituals they do with young and animal because of the purity of spirit. They want they want to try to take that in. You know, and they use the dams. I I'm pretty. I don't have any type of like. Um, I do have one story that would take too long to say right now, but about a dam and experience at a dam, but I just, I can sense it that they're using the energy that they're creating via the dams to do some, some dam stuff. Uh, that makes know, sense. It, it just, Hoover, it, it feels the Hoover dam. The Hoover dam's right there near Las Vegas, correct? It's right there near the Graham Canyon. It's right there. You know, it's, and that's one thing that I love about the Native American culture as well. It's so funny because I think they embrace this more and they openly talk about this more than we do. And I follow, there's actually an account on Instagram that I follow. It's the Native American accounts. And they post really interesting stuff, but then they start, they post funny stuff too. And it's like, when I first, when I saw this morning, it's like, when I first bring my white friend to the reservation, and it's showing them like sitting in their house. The guy's playing both parts himself and his white friend. The white friend looking out the window going, well, look at the coyote. Look at that coyote. He goes, why is the coyote standing on its hind legs? Why is the coyote's eyes changing color? And the friend goes, shut the window. He's like, what? He goes, no, just shut the window. And they shut the window. And his friend goes, why am I hearing my mom's voice? And the, the Native American goes, I'm hearing my mom's voice. It's okay. Just keep the window shut. And it's, you know, obviously they're talking, they're, they're making fun of the whole shapeshifters, right? And the, the uh, skinwalkers. And, um, but the fact that like, it's just so nonchalantly spoken about in Native American culture, but yet we call it folklore and it's not real and it's just a legend, but they openly talk about this idea. And I think if we were raised from a very young age, knowing that magic exists, that shapeshifting exists and that we control it within ourselves, the world would probably be back to where it was with Atlantis. Because yeah. we know in Atlantis, they had far more superior technology than we have today. You and know? a lot of it was spiritual. I call it spiritual technology. Yeah. I think there was probably also mechanical, like you have the dark and the light probably back then too, right? Yeah, so, well, that's, really, that's how it fell. Because yeah, yeah. Yeah. But a lot of it, yeah, there were the the good magicians who were using, like it's all internal. They could do the same thing that say like technology, I think we're going to say we get to the point of like making portals, but if we're making the portals by using technology, I I'm not going to go through a portal that they created via technology. I only want to go through one that was naturally created via the spirit, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. For sure. For sure. For sure. I would totally agree with you on that because <laughs> We, we've seen what their we, we've seen their agenda i don't want to be part of that no thank you um, I'm, not, I'm not sure that connects with egypt but i do just like i i see like where humanity is going it's like as those technologies are are developed in the tech world like there's going to be the parallel of people are going to come into those types of 
realizations in the spirit world too. So we, I think we will get back to those times of Atlantis. When more and more people are learning, they can astro travel. I learned, yeah. I, I learned a couple of years ago that I've been astro traveling my whole life. And I hadn't, I knew, I knew when something was happening to me, but yeah. I didn't know what it was. Yeah. And when I learned what it was and I learned that feeling I get in my body is when that's happening. I was like, Oh, that makes a lot of sense. And a lot of people actually do this. And when we start to learn what it is, we can then control it better. Yeah. Learn how to remote view. I mean, my friend Jessica, I know we're gonna I want to do some shows with you and her as well. She she taught me how she does this. And I, I give I know how to give her uh blind targets now, you know, for her but it's it's super simple if you're willing to listen. And we all have these abilities. And that might have been the biggest difference, is that and that might be why America is so mysterious in a lot of ways and why they try to hide things from us is maybe this was a concentration of people that knew how to do this and that energy is still here in this land i mean that's why i think that they named it atlanta used to be called elizabethstown then they changed its name why did they change its name to atlanta well because the atlantic ocean well why is the atlantic ocean called the atlantic ocean does it have anything to do with atlantis probably probably, probably. so there's there's all these things and i I actually just got finished uh, filming Derek with Kathy O'Brien. Do you know who she is? Kathy yeah. O'Brien. She's a survivor of the most horrific stuff going on. I won't because I'll because of YouTube. Anyway, um, oh, she keeps saying that she's like we're we're winning. Like the good is winning. It might be hard to see that now, but we're waking up. But just because we're waking up, we've taken so much of our power back just by waking up, just by having an awakening. Yeah. Yeah. So. I love well, guys, I know we've gone over an hour. This is such a fun conversation, Derek. I cannot wait to see what our friends watching have to say, like your thoughts and your opinions. I so want to hear what you guys have to say. I know a lot of people watching right now are kind of in agreement with us. And again, I want to, you know, I want to just make this clear. Like all we're doing is just talking about a theory, you guys. Like we don't have all the answers. But this is the first time I've ever talked about it publicly. Except, I've talked except, to except, except with my parents. So. I, I don't even I, think I'm I, talking I'm about my parents. My parents are probably thinking I'm batshit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, my parents are excited to watch this show. But yeah. uh, no, I'm very interested of of other how other people came in to the ideas or just like or, there's one thing, like, like you, you read some stuff and it just doesn't feel right, but then you read some stuff and you connect with it, right? So I would be interested to hear from other people, especially from Europe for some reason, um, of how and why it makes sense to, to you, you know? That America might be, well, because if, if that's the case, if, if this that is the truth, if America is the origin point, if America is Egypt, then that means that this land is literally your land and my land, as we sing in songs when we were, ki we were kids about this man is your land, this man is my land. <laughs> yeah. So for the Europeans, this would be their home base as well. Yeah. You know, and um, you know, there's a reason why America's called the melting pot. Uh, you know, maybe maybe it's because it's always been. Maybe I I don't know. But the, the thing is, is again, is we're not. If you're if you're new to this and it's the first time you're hearing this theory, Derek and I aren't entertaining this idea because there's no evidence. We're entertaining this idea because there's a lot of evidence that makes you scratch your head and go, one thing might be a coincidence, two things, three things, four things, five things, six things, seven things is a conspiracy. Yeah. And especially because I had dreams about it first and then I came into um, like actual data on it. I know just from experience that there's something to it. It may not be it may not be that this uh, that ancient Egypt is in America, but if that's not it, there's still something to there's do something with else. It. Yeah, there's, there's something something there. we don't know. There's too much evidence. There's too much proof. There's too much. You know, uh, one thing that drives me crazy is when the government comes around and says, you can't go to this land. Who says? What may, Who gave you the authority to tell right. me that I can't walk on land? Like, yeah. what? That's not... Listen, in our constitution, the people rule the country, not you. You work for us. We don't work for you. So, what? What? Yeah. You mean I can't? There's certain parts of the Grand Canyon. Uh, for my own safety, since when has, have Americans been worried about safety? <laughs> what are you talking about you're not concerned about my safety let's let's be real you are <laughs> not concerned about my safety what don't you want me to see yeah what don't you want the average joe schmo to see because the average joe schmo is super smart and super magical and i think they fear if we see something it will wake us up and attune us 
to the truth. And yeah. once, as somebody once said, I think it's the great, you know, there's all these great sayings like you can't unring a bell. My favorite saying, saying you can't get the ship back in the horse. Uh. It's already out. So, yeah. yeah, I'd love to hear you guys. I'd love to hear your perspectives. I'd love to hear um, everything you guys have to, if you've seen the Moon Eye Key or the Moon Eye Key, the Moon Eyed People, Moon Eye Key is a Peruvian. Uh, lineage but the moon eyed people um if you've seen that let me know your thoughts that's over gnostic tv i'll put those links down there too because derek you've been and i can't wait to do more with you derek hopefully yes. we'll, get, we'll get more i want to do land between the lakes with you as well because i'm and, land between the lakes that's close to here and i know my friend jessica does a lot of work it's yeah we, we need to get her actually i watched her episode on ancient egypt in america last night and after watching that i had to shoot her an email and i mentioned that three of us should get together and i gotta go catch up her shows last yesterday guys before we end out if you're in the southeastern part of the united states and you have at&t like i do derek's on verizon so he missed out all the fun yesterday but lord have mercy I don't know what happened with AT&T yesterday, but my whole day got flushed down the toilet because all of a sudden somebody, somebody forgot to flick a switch because it just, so I've got a lot to catch up on. Um, so anyway, you guys, well, I can't wait. I definitely want to do land between the lakes. Cause that's, that's new information to me as well. And it's so close to where we live and I yeah. love discovering these new things. So, all right, you guys. So, so Derek, I'm going to put your Instagram down in the description box below for people. Um, I know you used to have a YouTube channel. Are you going to reopen it anytime soon? I might. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you do, let me know, and we'll we'll put it out there, and we'll get. I, I am. I, I'm thinking about it. I just have to make that decision. I, I did start an Etsy account. Okay. It's. it's I'll send you the link for that. Send me the link. Text me the link. I'll put it in the description box as well. Um, uh, because we we on on this channel, we definitely like to support each other and help each other out. Because as Ron Doss, my favorite teacher of all time, the late Ron Doss said, we're all just walking each other home. Yep. You know, that home that home for all of us might just be America. <laughs> Who knows at this point? Who knows? <laughs> so so well, thank you so much, Derek. I cannot wait to do this again. And thank you guys so much. For watching um let i'll tell you what i'll tell you what I'll, I'll i'll ask you guys your opinion in the comment section but i also want to know if you are from europe or africa or asia or australia any canada if there's something very mysterious and weird about your continent or your country as well and that's making you kind of question your own history maybe just mention a little bit about it in the comment section and i'll look into it we'll see what we can find because Something's got to give, you guys. All connected somehow. It's all connected, and it's not us versus us. It's never been us. We're all on the same team. We're all on the same team. It's us versus them. So, um, so anyway, well, I hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful weekend and start to your your weekend. And Derek and I will talk to you guys very soon. Bye, everybody.